Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue, and this channel is all about the Enneagram and how it relates to our life and can make our lives better. Be more compassionate with ourselves and with everybody else that we live with. Just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website, tomlehue.com. What do I do? I do Enneagram coaching and relationship coaching. What is that? Well, you know, sometimes people feel stuck in life and they feel like they uh, need some help and some encouragement and this happens to all of us at times and people uh, either book a single appointment with me or they book a plan three weeks six weeks 12 weeks all of that's available on my website and I do classes and the video that we're gonna watch today is from one of my classes the last class I just released is called invincible you uh, resilient mindset coaching now you may have seen on my um, on my list of videos in the past, uh, there's one called the Enneagram cost me my job. And that's right. You should go back and watch that video. I make classes and one of the classes that I made is called Invincible You. Now, why did I make that class? Well, I realized that I was getting kind of low and discouraged and frustrated with life. And so I started doing uh, research and started learning about resilience. And basically it's the idea of picking yourself up brushing yourself off, not uh, ignoring or denying the pain of setbacks and hardships in life, but deciding that you're going to uh, not let those stop you. You're going to move forward anyway. And I knew that I needed to go through that kind of information. I need to get recharged. And so as I went through that, and came out the other side, then I started uh, I started thinking, you know, a lot of other people might need this because let's face it guys, life is hard, relationships can be challenging, um, you can have financial trouble, you can have physical health problems. And um, the Invincible You class is uh, Resilient Mindset Coaching starts on September 2nd, uh, live on Zoom. But like I said, it's already an on-demand class. So you can take it live with me or you can take it on demand. This video comes from that course. And so you might be thinking, what is that about? What is that about? Well, this video that we're going to watch today uh, will give you a preview of what to expect. And if it's the kind of thing that you feel like you need in your life, then I'd love for you to sign up for that, cl that class. Um, because my goal is to put out information that will encourage you and help you, help you know more about yourself, the people that you love, and keep you focused and, and stay in the game and always present to life. So let's, let's go to the video now, and I hope that it encourages you. Okay, we're talking about letting our failures inspire you. And the reality is, is all of us are going to have our share of setbacks and failures. None of us are going to be immune from this. And we want to stay engaged in the process through all of the ups and downs of life. Because let's face it, most of life is going to be lived in the ups and downs. Uh, very rarely is life, you know, just fine. Sometimes for a while, but then eventually stuff happens. We have financial problems, uh, unexpected job loss, health issues, um, you know, the, the, uh, the plumbing breaks, and uh, we're back on this roller coaster again and we want to be okay no matter what's going on in our life and we want to make sure that we stay focused and engaged um, no matter what challenges we face so most of life's lessons are going to be learned the hard way you know we can listen to wise people and we can we can take notes and and um, try to look at other people's examples but the reality is is most of the time we really have to learn things the hard way. We have to realize for ourselves that this plan isn't going to work um, as much as we uh, would like it to, and as much as we're committed to it. It's just not. It's just not going to work. And so sometimes we have to learn these lessons uh, the hard way. We we learn very little when we succeed and accomplish a goal. I mean, it feels great to win. It feels great to finish and accomplish a goal. But there's something within our spirit that wants to be moving toward a goal. And so once we accomplish a goal, we often find ourselves saying, is this all there is? I mean, we might celebrate for three hours or three days or three weeks, but then we start asking ourselves, like, what's next? What's the next um, thing I'm going to focus on? What's my next goal? 
And, um, you know, we do learn some lessons when things work out the right way. But really, the bookshelf of lessons is going to come uh, by learning uh, what doesn't work. And um, we celebrate the win briefly, but we usually start looking for the next objective, the next thing to occupy ourselves with. And many lessons will only be learned through disappointment and sadness and frustration. And we will learn what doesn't work so that we can try something new and start moving in a new direction. And there's great lessons to be learned also on the way to the goal as we make progress. You know, um, we can get kind of discouraged when we we don't have an objective in front of us. If we have nothing to do and nothing to look forward to, we can get quite discouraged. But you know, after we accomplish the goal, we can also find ourselves getting a little bit discouraged. What really seems to energize us, what makes us passionate and live with passion, is making progress toward a goal. So I want you to think about, what is my goal here? What is it I'm, I'm moving toward? What big grand adventure am I on? And if you can't think of anything, if just nothing comes to your mind, then you've got something to think about. Like, what what would make my life better? And why do I not feel compelled to have stated goals? And if I were to have stated goals and something that would make my life better, where would I start? And begin writing those things down as they come to your mind. Um, to be clear, we're not choosing defeat. We're not saying, let's go out and lose so that we can gain everybody's sympathy, and they'll feel sorry for us. We're not saying try to not win or try to lose or try to do shoddy work so that it doesn't get any recognition. We're just saying that when you do experience failure, we're not going to choose to stay defeated. Um, we're not um, going to waste that failure either by just feeling sorry for ourselves. Because in every failure, there's a lesson to be learned. Uh, in every failure, there's an opportunity for us to grow and for us to challenge ourselves. And without failures and setbacks, you know, I don't know that we would develop the same way emotionally or mentally. We certainly wouldn't have compassion like we do. We know what it's like to blow it and make a mistake, so it's easier for us to have compassion for others. And I think at the end of the day, the human spirit longs to overcome obstacles and solve problems. There's something about us that wants to grow. And, you know, think about every movie that you like. You know, very rarely does, do, do you like a movie where the characters, everything just works out fine all the time. I mean, every great epic movie or epic saga, there's always a, a series of defeats and setbacks as the hero, you know, is betrayed and, and mistreated and unjustly accused, but then rises from the ashes to overcome the obstacles. That's the hero's story, and that should be your story. That could be your story, but it's going to have to take some determination. It's going to have to take some decisions on your part that you are going to uh, see yourself as that hero, that you're not going to see yourself as the victim. You know, it's all about our perceptions. It's all about how we see ourselves and the story we tell ourselves. Every epic movie is just a regular guy who's faced with overwhelming obstacles and has to learn to rise to the occasion. And that's the goal of this journey, is to learn to rise to the occasion. So what is in your future? I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Um, but if it was great, could you believe it? If it was great, if it was outstanding, would you accept that? Or would you be the first one to say, oh no, nothing like that ever happens to me. Oh no, nothing like that could ever happen in my life. Why not? Why not? Why can't you climb mountains? Why can't you walk on water? Why can't you overcome and move the mountain? Why can't you? Why not you? Maybe you've never thought about that before. You just always expect something great to happen in someone else's life. Oh, of course, they'll be able to accomplish those goals, but not me. Why? Why would you tell yourself that? Are you afraid to try? Are you afraid to really dig down deep? What if you try and then fail? Would that be a very painful feeling? Of course it would be. But you know what else is a painful feeling? Um, looking back on your life and not really 
showing up fully to your life. That's also a very painful feeling. And you can make the decision right now. You can just shake it off and say, all right, things didn't work out the way I wanted to in the past, but that's the past. And the past is important. We learn a lot of lessons from the past, but I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to live in the present with my eyes on the future. You can make that decision today. You know, All right, guys, if today's video is something that is speaking to you and the information is stuff that is helpful to you, I just want to remind you that it is part of a greater class called Invincible You. And this class is available on demand on my website. In other words, you can sign up and then you can take it in your own time. There's videos and lessons and all kinds of information, a lot more than is expressed in this video. But if you find this kind of information helpful, I would encourage you to consider signing up for that on-demand class, Invincible You Resilient Mindset Coaching. If you would like to take that class live with me on Zoom and other participants, that class starts live on Zoom September 2nd, Saturday. And I would love for you to consider being a part of that class. And the classes that I teach on Zoom, we have a great time. I give lots of information and there's always room for, for time for discussion. And uh, I hope that you'll consider signing up in one way or the other. And my goal is just to come alongside of you and help you, encourage you, and get you back into life, back into the game, and as always, present to life. So let's go back to the video and let's, uh, let's catch some more of this information and let it challenge and motivate you. You know, opportunities to fail are all around us. And every one of us has our chances to blow it every day in the way we interact with people, in the conversations we have, what we spend our time on. All of us have the opportunity to screw it up and make a mistake. And we're going to make plenty of them. That means there's a lot of opportunities for us then to gain wisdom and gain experience. As we make mistakes, let's not waste those mistakes. Let's learn from them and say, wow. I learned the hard way a couple of times that this isn't going to work, even though it's in the books, even though it's what the experts recommend. It just doesn't work in my life. It just doesn't work in my, in my experience. The difference is not that one person fails and the other person succeeds. That's always been the way it is. What the real difference is, is some people will get up after they fail and other people won't. Some people will get up with a new energy and say, wow, now I learned something that time and I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm not going to let this one stop me and wake up with like a renewed sense of purpose and energy while other people just want to go back to sleep. Um, those that succeed are those that don't quit. Yeah, sure. The path is easy for some people. Some people have maybe all the doors open for them, but you're not one of those people. Okay, so let's just accept that, that if you're going to make it in this world, if you're going to accomplish your goals, you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to outwork um, the rest. You're just going to have to buckle down and do what needs to be done. And you've got to make that decision that you're going to do what is necessary in order to move forward. So if you want to take a step forward in life, then you have to understand that failure is going to happen. You are going to try things. It's not going to work. And then you're going to want to quit. At first, you're very excited to move forward. But then after two or three or four attempts and nothing happens, you're going to feel exhausted. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to be disappointed. And you know, those feelings are 100% predictable. Anybody would feel that way, but that doesn't mean you have to give in to what those feelings are trying to tell you, that you got to give up and stop, that you got to quit. You don't have to quit. You don't have to stop. You can decide to move forward. So you will need to choose to use uh, your failure as inspiration. You'll have to be inspired by it rather than defeated by it. And use it as a reason to not give up and say, wow, this is challenging, this is hard, but I can do hard things. Failure can either eliminate you from the game or it can inspire you. You know, think about that team that's, that's um, you know, goes to the locker room at halftime and they're down by 10 points. Well, they're not doing well and there's a good chance they're going to lose. But what happens in that team? They find this resolve 
They say, you know what? We're on our own home court and we're being beaten by these people that are from outside in our own at our own court. And we're not going to lay down and take this. We're going to stand up and rise up. And so they something happens in that locker room. Now, if they were doing well and they were on top, they wouldn't have had that talk. They would have had a very different talk. Maybe they would have started to feel very comfortable. Oh, we're way ahead. We don't need to really give all the effort. But it's that failure, not meet, meeting your goals and lagging behind, that inspires the team to give it their best. And that's what we want to do is we want to tap into that and say, you know what? So what? Yesterday was yesterday. It didn't work out the way I wanted to, but who knows what's going to happen today. And that positive mindset and that positive outlook is what's going to move you forward and carry you forward in life. It's going to wake you up. Fear, failure, those things can defeat you or they can wake you up and say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. I'm not going to I'm not going to show up with the same energy that I've been giving. I'm not getting the result that I want. So I'm going to step up my game. I'm going to read more and learn more. I'm going to try harder. Those are good things. Um to motivate you with that sense of determination. You know really when you have that sense of determination about you, nobody can stop you. They can't. They might laugh at you. They might question you. They might uh, wag their head and think you're crazy, but you know what? They really can't stop you. They could even fire you, but that isn't, you know, the end of the world either. Life goes on. You go on. And with that kind of determination, you will go on no matter what gets in your way. Inspiration comes to us in many ways and in many different forms. And most of us, if we were honest, we'd rather find our inspiration from winning. We'd rather find our inspiration from succeeding. We, we prefer not to have to, you know, get the stick. We want the carrot and we, we want to move in a way that feels good. We don't want negative consequences. But negative consequences, they're there for a reason. When we make choices that aren't necessarily in our best interest, we can expect negative consequences. Whatever you sow, that you're going to reap. And it works for the positive as well as the negative. But you know, when we can look at failure a little more objectively, we may discover that failures often break us out of our comfort zone. They break us out of our status quo because everything was going fine until it wasn't. Everything was going fine. Everybody was comfortable and nobody felt like there was any problem until there was. And now that we feel that, now that we're, we're feeling the loss or the panic that comes from, from failure, guess what? this is a good time for us to change because the comfort zone and the status quo wasn't all that great. We just got used to it. And life could be a lot better than we realize. And your future could be a lot better than you realize. Your job, your marriage, your home, your family, your career, your education, all of this could be so much better than we, than we realize. And sometimes it takes getting shaken up out of our comfort zone by something we don't like and don't want and wouldn't choose to wake us up and say, you know, why am I even doing this? Why am I even here? Why have I accepted this as my normal? Maybe I should change my normal and change what I call normal. This can be a great blessing when we've gotten stuck in routines. And let's face it, we do get stuck in routines. Uh, even the ones that aren't working for us, even the routines that aren't working for us, we get stuck in them. So let's begin to examine our failures and benefit from them without you know, getting weighed down in them and getting defeated and discouraged. First, you have to accept that what happened to you really did happen to you. We're not asking you to deny the truth. Your feelings about the situation are legitimate and you have every right to feel upset and disappointed and sad. You're allowed to feel those feelings for as long as you need to. Just realize it's really hard to move forward as long as you're, you know, feeling all of that stuff. So at some point, we've got to wipe our uh, eyes and wipe the dust off of us and get back up. Take some time to sit on the bench if you need to and deal with your disappointment, your rage, your betrayed, you know, spirit, your embarrassment. Take some time for yourself. 
um, by all means, walk it off. Uh, but once you've begun the process to process those feelings, then we got to start to try to look at things more objectively and constructively. So we don't just stay stuck looking backward. We've got to step out of this a little bit and say, okay, reality has hit me, but what do I want going forward? What a powerful question that is. Rather than looking back or just sitting in the feelings saying, what do I want going forward? What do I want to see my life look like? Inspiration can come when we begin to take ourselves and our feelings out of the situation. We begin to ask these positive questions like, why didn't this work? What could I have done differently? What changes could I make going forward? There it is, going forward. What opportunities are available to me now? And whose support do I need to enlist? In other words, is there somebody that I need to reach out to that maybe knows something I don't know or has been through this before that might encourage me and help me not to lose heart and give up? When we are inspired, we are charged up and we are ready to create whatever changes need to be made um, and to move us closer to our goals. So what would it take today to get you excited? Seriously, what would it take to get you excited? Do you ever get excited? What do you get excited about? Do you get excited about moving forward in life? Do you get excited about setting goals? Do you get excited about trying, about getting back up? What would it take for you to show up fully to your life, excited, enthusiastic, and ready for whatever is next? I can guarantee you this. There's a lot of people in your life that would love to see you get excited. Even if it was for something stupid. But it'd be so much better if it was for something meaningful. For example, what would it take for you to get excited about your marriage? Seriously. Oh, well, they'd have to change, right? Your spouse would have to change and then you would get excited. Good luck. They're never going to change. Well, they might change, but you're not going to be the one that changes them. So what would it take for you to get excited, for you to get excited about your work? To get excited about the training that you need to go through? What would it take for you to get excited about that stack of papers that you've been ignoring that's sitting on your desk that just needs somebody to go through them? Guess who it needs to go through them? You, that's right. What would it take for you to get excited about that? Can you just find some kind of enthusiasm in just putting down a goal, working through it, and then checking it off? Don't you get a sense of like fulfillment? Just a little bit of like, wow, I had this big obstacle. I broke it down. I took an hour or two, I worked through that, and I checked off the boxes, and it feels good to get something done, even if it's something simple. Sometimes you need those small wins or those small victories to help you on your way to larger wins, to get you to believe in yourself again. Look, I believe in you, so let's believe in ourselves. These are all great ways for us to get thinking about developing a new plan and getting ourselves inspired uh, to take the next step forward so that we, like the phoenix, can rise from the ashes.